Hi, welcome back. I'm Jenny with Homeschool Teens with Jenny, and today I'm going to do a curriculum review of Friendly Biology. Friendly Biology saved us this year. We picked another curriculum. It didn't work out so well. It just wasn't a good fit for my student, and so we made a switch two months into the school year. But Friendly Biology delivered, and my son just completed the textbook, and now we're into paper dissections to finish out the year. So I'm gonna show you both of those things. I'm gonna share the curriculum with you with a flip through and what my thoughts are on it, as well as the paper dissections we're using and where I got those. So let's turn the camera around and take a peek. Okay, so here we are with the Friendly Biology curriculum. Now we started biology with a different program. And so he picked up where he left off and he actually picked up in genetics. And so he started right here with lesson 13. So we did not get through lessons one through 12 in this curriculum. Something that Friendly Biology does that I did want to mention before I get into this, if you have your proof of purchase from the past curriculum that didn't work for your child, they will offer their program to you for 40% off. I thought that was just really fantastic because I had already invested in another program and it was too rigorous for my student. It made him absolutely hate science. He dreaded the lessons every day. He was completely miserable and he could do the work, but it was becoming quite an issue in our household. And so we decided two months in to go ahead and find something else. So he had already done an AP honors level biology through lesson 12 and he had done multiple labs, a lab every single week with that curriculum. So he already had a majority of his lab credit done. So I just wanted to let you know that because we're coming into this a little um, less than halfway. But this is what it looks like. It is in color. And one thing, this is the table of contents and you can view all of this on the Friendly Biology website. I will make sure that um, I leave that link in the description box below for you. But one thing my student mentioned was that he really liked the space um, of the way the text was laid out. He appreciated that it wasn't crammed with tiny letters everywhere, but it kind of broke things up in a manageable amount. So let me turn to lesson 13. The program is laid out where the first day you read the text, the second day you do the worksheet, the third day you do the lab, and the fourth day you do the test. You could you know, divide the reading into two days to make it a five-day program. We used a four-day program because we also have a homeschool co-op we attend. Where we got to lesson 13, there wasn't a lot of labs um, left in this curriculum, and I'll show you that in just a minute. Starting with lesson 13, this is the genetics chapter, and it starts on page 211, and it ends on page 234. The words are spaced nicely, and there are a lot of graphics, as you can see as well. So that is one lesson. So now let me show you what the student workbook looks like. Okay, so here you have lesson one, and you have the practice page, and it was usually all the way through, they're usually two to three pages, the practice pages. Most of the time they're fill in the blank. The crosswords throughout this really do help the students learn um, the definitions. So you will have a practice page with fill in the blank. I called this a study guide because that's really what it was. And then a crossword puzzle. Then the parents are provided with a lesson tests and answer keys book. And so we'll go to lesson one and this is the actual test. There is a PDF available so that your student doesn't have to write in the book. If you have multiple students, you can buy the PDF for just a few dollars. You can print them off and um, 
you don't have to write in this book, but the tests are provided for the student in this book if that's what you would like to do. So the answer key starts on page 69. This is the test answer key. So it'll say test number chapter one and the test numbers, chapter two, the test. So you can see there's up to 22 problems in a test, but there can also be as few as seven. They kind of jump around. The seven one is over here with chapter 20. So do know the amount of questions does vary pretty significantly. And the test is always multiple choice. So you can see that here, one of the last tests for the student here, you can see it's always the same layout, it's always multiple choice, and that includes a true and false as well. This is the answer key for the practice pages. One thing I did notice in here is occasionally there were typos throughout. Uh, my son caught some, I caught some in the layout of the test and the practice pages, sometimes things got missed with being numbered or something. Um, it was minimal, but they do exist. So yeah, I just wanted to show you a little bit about the labs and I'll um, explain what we did. So they have a list of lab supplies available to you on the Friendly Biology website. You can actually see them before you even buy the curriculum just to see what's required. And this can kind of show you the number of labs that you're required to do, but you have one here for every lesson for one through five. And then you have six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 together, 11, 12, and then you don't have a lab until lesson 17. And then there are dissection specimens that you can, are optional that you can buy for 21 through 27. They also do have a video option that you can buy and get access to, and those have the dissections actually on video if you choose to do it that way. But I thought the labs were pretty light as far as how many there were. Another thing that didn't impress me was this is the template that the kids get for lab reports. It's not the way I would want my student to write up a lab. It may be fine for you. This was just, I thought, a bit elementary, I'm guessing is what I'm trying to say, but it's just a template you can use for every single lab. I pulled up the lab reports that my son did for the previous curriculum he was working on and we used that format instead. It was just a little more professional. What we chose to do, and this has nothing to do with friendly biology, but I did wanna share it with you. Uh, my son is very sensitive to smells and did not want to do a live specimen with formaldehyde. And so we chose to do paper dissection. I bought this off of Teachers Pay Teachers. And again, I will put the link in the description box below. But what you get with this is first, you get text that tell you about what each part of the frog does. So pages one through five will tell you what each part of the frog does. And each part of the frog that you have to identify is bolded, so this is the first part of it. Then it tells you just how to put your model together. This is a worksheet that the student starts out with, and it goes through each organ that you're gonna identify in your paper frog, and you have to find the structure and function out of the paragraph information that they give you and write it in here. So you're gonna do this first, it also tells you what color that you're gonna color that part of your frog. And I'll show you the frog. So you do have to go through this worksheet first and there are 71 parts of the frog that you are going to label and identify before you do your dissection. <laughs> There's also, if you choose to use this, there are essay questions that your student can answer as well about the frog just to show what they've learned. You also get a teacher key, but let me show you the frog. I had this printed on cardstock and you have a front and a back, as you can see here. Hopefully you can get that in the camera frame good. And each little part is numbered. So there's number 20. And when you refer back to your sheet, and I'll just pull out the answer key here. When you re 
pull back your sheet. For the teacher key, you see number 20 is the mandible, and they want you to color it a skin color. And so your student would use colored pencils and would color the mandible the skin color. Once this is colored, you cut all the pieces of the frog out and the directions are in the packet that tell you how to assemble and you end up making a frog model. So as you can see, this is not just coloring and putting a simple frog together. There are 71 parts that you're gonna identify on this frog before you ever get <laughs> to assembling him. And so there's a lot of learning happening here. I think, honestly, there's more learning in this than there would be in a specimen trying to cut and identify simple organs in a live specimen, which there is value in that for sure. But this takes it even a step further in my opinion. We have chosen to do three of these. We're doing a frog, a human eye, and a bird. And there's a lot of different options. So we have completed the text part of Friendly Biology. So what do we think about this curriculum now that we have finished the bookwork part? I think that the reading is manageable. I think the text being nice and spread out and airy with a lot of graphics gives the students time to process the information. There's not too much on one page. If you have a student that gets overwhelmed by how much text is on a page, I think this is a very good option. I did think the program, compared to the program my son was doing at the very beginning of the year, I do think this is much lighter. There's going to be different levels of rigor in the curriculums that you choose. And I would say that this would be somewhere in the low to medium end of rigor. I think my student learned exactly the basics and has a great foundation in biology to move on to a collegiate level. Um, I would call this a college prep curriculum. He learned all the terminology. He understood all the concepts. He showed mastery in that. Um, but compared to the course he took at the beginning of the year, um, it was, it just required less of him. I think the student workbooks with the fill in the blank and the word search for every single lesson got a little monotonous for him. After a while, he chose just to do, and you'll see his work towards the end because we started in chapter 13, but he started off doing the crosswords and then ended up not. Um, just it got monotonous and a little boring for him, but I called the fill in the blank worksheets a study guide and told him this was preparing him for his test. And so he did it for every single chapter, um, but it wasn't super interesting. And like I said, there were some layout issues and typos here and there throughout the curriculum. I also thought that the lab requirement was a little light. I didn't feel like it was teaching a student how to write a lab report. I actually found some formats that we ended up mimicking instead of using the downloadable version that was provided with this curriculum. I do think it's plenty of labs for a lab credit. We did buy the videos that went along with the curriculum. Uh, they were, they would, average where we got to about 45 minutes to an hour and my son didn't want to have to read the textbook and then watch an hour-long lecture video the videos do not replace the text um, in the in the frequently asked questions section of the friendly biology website it answers this question and it does tell you that the videos are supplemental they're not to replace the text, so just keep that in mind. Your student may like that. They may like to read this one day and watch the video the next day just to emphasize what they read in the text, and that may help them tremendously. But for my son, it wasn't something he was interested in using. The last thing I'll say about this curriculum is it restored my son's love for science. He looked forward to doing science every day. I actually emailed um, Dr. Haida and let him know Thank you so much, first of all, for the discount that you provided after we already bought a full curriculum. And second of all, this curriculum restored my son's love for science. And for that, I am grateful. I am glad we used this. So I hope that was really helpful for you guys. If you want, comment in the box below and let me know what did you use for science this year? Did you have any flops? Did you need to make a change? 
what kind of biology curriculum has worked for you in your house? I'd love to meet you and talk with you more in the comments. Have a great day today and I'll see you in the next one.